The motivation for this research was actually heated debates uh, together with colleagues over lunch uh, about the recent developments with EduTech, so education technologies. So the university decided to have a massive investment in live streaming technology so that students can essentially sit anywhere on the planet and follow the lecture uh, broadcasted um, uh, to their homes. Uh, and we realized, well, there's not a lot of research about these live streaming technologies uh, and particularly no work on understanding what is the actual impact on student performance. Uh, so that was the start um, of this project and our dean got um, us together, colleagues from labor economics, econometrics, uh, and we focusing on behavioral science uh, to understand the impact of these technologies on student uh, performance. So student take up was actually relatively low, surprisingly low. Only 10% of the students decided to use the live streaming uh, um, services. What we realized though was um, it depended on a lot of external factors. So we um, merged also data, not only what they did in terms of did they actually use the technology, so the tracking data in the system, but also external data. So we used weather um, uh, data for instance, and also data on flu symptoms in Switzerland from the uh, Swiss Federal Office of Public Health. So what we realized is it really depends on external shocks. So if there are a lot of flus um, during the time, or if the bad weather hits, students like to use these technologies uh, and to follow the lecture um, from their home. Well, the average treatment effect was zero. Uh, but what was interesting, uh, when we dig deeper in the data, the movement was coming from the extremes of the distribution. So what we realized was that the weaker students based on prior academic performance were actually negatively hit by live streaming. So when they were using live streaming, their performance in the exams at the end of the semester was reduced by 18 percentage points. Whereas for those students that were stronger academically, when they were using live streaming versus no live streaming, they boosted their performance by 25 uh, percentage points. So we observed quite large sizable uh, effects. No average treatment effect, but a lot of movement at the extremes of the distribution. So the underlying explanation uh, is to some extent speculation because we're not able to ask all the students uh, about the underlying psychological process, but we have the chance to run a short follow-up survey. And what is suggestive um, is that for the stronger students, it take a lot of the non-essential things out of the learning experience. There's no distraction in the classroom. You have the ability to directly focus on the material that is in front of you. So that seems to prove and, and boost performance for the stronger students. But exactly that taking out the social part of the equation is also harming the weaker students because those students with a weaker past academic performance have less ability during breaks, for instance, to do simple things like going to the professor and the teacher and ask uh, about the material or ask a fellow student sitting next to them. So an important implication for public policy is that we have to look beyond population averages. So we have to pay more attention what happens at the extremes of society. So as society becomes more diverse and also through technology, you see more inequalities arising. We have to pay more attention to what happens to certain subgroups. So when you think about the pandemic, for instance, in the United States last year, you saw cases of poorer children, so children from poorer homes, sitting in front of McDonald's using their Wi-Fi to follow a lecture. In some cases, students not even having a device to follow the material in the school. So for public policy, that implies, instead of just looking at population averages, you have to pay more attention to subgroups at the extremes of our society.